Chuck. Reed Irvine, Accuracy and Media. Oh, yeah, nice to hear your voice. Uh, good to talk to you. I, uh, I was really thrilled by your vid video, and uh, we're looking forward to um, showing some parts of it on our show uh, Wednesday night. And uh, I guess you've been in touch with uh, Larry. I talked to him about <clears throat> your coming down here. I, 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 we decided that it, for the uh, if we show, um, all what we'd like to do is show about uh, two two of our segments, two ten minute segments, devoted to the film. And then we have one segment that we start off with devoted to the news, and that would leave really leave only about ten minutes. Um, for a discussion with you and with callers, and it, uh, it uh, didn't seem like a good use of your time or a good use of our money to to uh, bring you down just for, for uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, right. So uh, what we'd like to do is talk to you on the telephone sure. during that period, and, uh, <laughs> and we'll, you'll be able to take and uh, respond to callers. We'll open up the phone lines. and uh, Is there any particular subject you'd like to or aspect of this that you'd like to like to make sure we raise or bring up or no i uh i can't think of anything in particular um, did you uh, spend any time in japan yes i um i, I made uh, several trips over there i was over there uh, of course i've made a couple of trips up there right after the war but then um i was over there oh maybe 20 years ago and then i was over there about five years ago uh -huh. Uh, I, I did a film over there with BBC. I see. I see. And uh, I had some of the crew members with me. You know, the different from the, both crews. You know. Yeah. What are the? Uh, how many of the crew members are uh, still around? Well, my crew, uh, less than half. Uh, I've got only my co-pilot, my third pilot, and uh, my uh, uh, assistant flight engineer. My flight engineer and my assistant flight engineer. So that's about half, yeah, five out of ten. Uh -huh. And uh, for all. Paul Tippett's crew has got about the same, maybe six out of ten uh, that are still around. Let me see. He, uh, the navigator and, uh, and the bombardier, the uh, uh, flight engineer is dead. Radio operator still living. And uh, I guess, the, yeah, he's got, I think he's got six out of ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About the same. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Are any of these, uh, any of them around the Washington area, or...? Um, let me just think. No, I don't think so. I think that, uh, uh, a lot of them, well, a couple of them in California, Colorado, Florida, Chicago. No, none yeah, of them yeah. around the Washington Okay, well, I just thought if they were, we'd invite them to come around. Sure. Um, <clears throat> how did they, um, how did the Japanese uh, treat you when you're over there? They... Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. I uh, was guest of this businessman who had been a 12-year-old boy in Hiroshima and was not injured, and uh, he went on to college and so forth and became a big businessman. I, I went over there just for the hell of it for a vacation. I was uh, went over in the space available of, uh, aircraft out of Hawaii. He happened to be in Hawaii. I said, uh, this guy had been to our conventions, and uh, he, brought, he used to bring the mayor of Hiroshima with him. And he was a hail fellow well met. And uh, he said, sometime you come to Japan, you call me. So mm -hmm. I uh, was in Hawaii, and I took a flight up to uh, Tokyo. And what, I, what year was this? Well, let me think now. I uh, was retired, so I retired when I was... Uh, I must have been around... Um, hmm, around 77, 78. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so I went up to Japan anyway, and I stayed at Yokota Air Base, but I gave him a ring on the phone. He says, oh, you uh, you wait, my men come get you. And he was in Hiroshima, but he had he owned a bunch of companies, and uh, a couple of guys came out in a big rinking town car, which is unusual in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and we went down, and we stayed at the, uh, uh, or rather, he put me up at the uh, Imperial Hotel. Yeah. But um, one night after dinner, we're sitting around having coffee and cigars, and he said, uh, you know, we love you Americans. He says that the blank blank uh, Tojo wanted to keep the war going and you yeah. guys wanted to get it over with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so he was he was uh, really grateful for uh, for the end. Yeah, as, as, as a lot of the Japanese people were. Yeah, well, you know, my I married a Japanese. I, uh, <laughs> I was on Saipan when you were on Tinian. No kidding. Yeah, I was in the Marine Corps. Oh, great. I love you guys. And... Um, 
we were, of course, getting ready for the invasion. <laughs> Need, needless to say, yeah. we felt pretty relieved uh, when the uh, end came so abruptly and uh, saved us at, uh, all that uh, trouble. Sure. And uh, then I, we went in, and uh, I was at the 2nd Division. We occupied uh, Kyushu, sure. and, uh, Nagasaki, headquartered in Nagasaki. And I ended up marrying uh, a girl from Nagasaki. Isn't that wonderful? And, of course, she feels the same way. I mean, yeah. They am glad the war, uh, the war was ended. They were getting thoroughly sick of it. And, yeah, uh, sure. sure. So uh, I don't think, of course, not all of them feel, feel that way. She's got friends. Uh, one of her friends' uh, classmates was the wife of this uh, uh, famous doctor that uh, distinguished himself in caring for the uh, victims in, uh, sure. in Nagasaki. And, and uh, he and uh, his wife have been very active in the No More Atom Bomb uh, oh, Crusade well, sure. and so on. But, yeah. but you know, they're not, uh, they don't have a lot of anger or anything like that. Uh, you know, they, uh, it's... Yeah, well, we found, you know, going into uh, going into Nagasaki in uh, September 45, uh, it was pretty amazing. Uh, here we'd been uh, mortal enemies, and uh, my gosh, not a single act of, uh, of violence or yeah. animosity. It was, uh, right. uh, it was, it was very impressive uh, yeah. how quickly those... Uh, and, and as I say, I think uh, a lot of people like my wife uh, were simply relieved that... Uh, Oh, sure. The thing had uh, finally ended. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I must tell you that I was there, I think, before you for this reason. We had our own transport airplanes. Yeah. And uh, Paul Tippett and I took one up to Tokyo. And then we were going to get down to Hiroshima, but there was no airfield right near there. There was nothing to, no place to land. So yeah. we went to Omira. Well, oh, yeah. We went to Nagasaki, but there was no airport in Nagasaki. So yeah. we landed over the hill yeah. in Omira. Yeah. And uh, got some trucks and, and came over and spent the night in Nagasaki, and that was like about September 3rd or 4th. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, right after the Missouri. Was there were, were there any uh, any American troops there? No, no Cause, American cause, troops. Because no we didn't come in until uh, I wasn't one of the first. We sent a little advance party up, uh, but uh, it was the hurricane season there. Yeah, they, right. There was a big hurricane that hit uh, hit about uh, I don't know around the 20th of September, something like that. Yeah. We went in about, the, I think we went in about the 25th. Yeah. So you went in all by yourselves? We went in all by ourselves, about, uh, about 15 of us. And, uh, oh, my God. <laughs> God. You know, but we, and we, we didn't know that the Navy was standing offshore waiting to get radiation clearance. We didn't even yeah. think about radiation. Yeah. So uh, we just went in and looked around, you know, looked around and we, we uh, stayed in a hotel out in the countryside. Is that a fact? Yeah, this was like, uh, there, was no Americans, there were no Americans around, but I, I, I can concur with what you say. The Japanese people were just nice as could be. You know, the, the mama and papa who ran the hotel took good care of us the best they could. They didn't have, they didn't have, you know, a, a big menu to choose from, but yeah. the, the best yeah. they could, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, uh, that was, that was one of the big grievances was the, uh, the food shortage that they were oh, yeah, yeah. Was, starving was, to death over there. Bad. I think, I didn't even, I didn't, I, I didn't plan to put my name down in the register, but, <laughs> but but Paul Tippett's walked right up and put his name down. I said, what the hell, if he can do it, I can. Well, of course, they didn't know your names anyway. No, so of course not, yeah. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't tell them that... Uh, no, 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 we said nothing. We just smiled, and, you know. And, uh, and the, uh, the, the food, I remember, was something I had never seen before. And I, to this day, I don't know what it was, but it wasn't anything like we ever knew, you know. Did you, have, did you have anybody there that spoke Japanese with you? Or? No, no, we just had uh, 15 guys that, uh, you know, were in the group headquarters kind of, you know. Uh, that's a fa you ought to write that up. That's a fascinating story. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I will. Sure. Yeah, we'll, t <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about that on the yeah. show. Okay. <laughs> new, new history disclosure. Yeah, new history. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, Chuck, it's great talking to you, and I look forward to it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'd like to meet you in person. If you come down here, or oh, get, sure. make another trip down here, by all means, let's get together. Oh, we'll I'd love that, Reed. Thank yeah. you. Uh, um, we'll we'll yeah. take you take you to dinner in a Japanese restaurant. Huh? <laughs> That'd be wonderful. I'd love that. Well, listen, keep up the good work yourself. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. I give my best to your your wife. I'd love to meet her sometime. Well, uh, by all means, let's okay. uh, try to let me know. By all means, let's get together. All we'll, right, Reed. Okay. Bye. So I'll talk to you on the on the telephone Wednesday night. Yep. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you.